Welcome to your Smart Pension video on how to fix upload errors. When you upload your PAPDIS file, you may occasionally get an error message. We want to make your pension administration as seamless as possible, saving you time and possible late notifications. We know that identifying upload errors can be tricky, but we're here to help. Here are some of the most common errors you might get when uploading and processing payroll. To see these errors, go to Contribution and Payroll, and then click Pre-assessed Contributions. Error message one, the employee ID is missing. This means you have an employee on your file without an assigned external ID. This ID cannot be left empty on your file. Enter the employee payroll reference in column O, save the change and re-upload your file. You can fix this error by opening the file and putting the employee payroll reference into column O. Error message two, the employer ID is missing. The employer ID must be complete for the file to be uploaded successfully. To fix this error, you will first need to find your employer ID. Select the menu on the top right-hand corner and scroll down to Company ID. You will need to add your employer ID to column C on your file. Once added, you can re-upload the file. To stop this error happening in the future, you can add your employer ID in your payroll software so your files are pre-populated. Error message three. Address 2 is missing. If you get this error message, it means that the address line 2 on your file, column T, is empty. Address lines 1 and 2 must be complete, but lines 3 and 4 can be empty. To fix this error, open your file and check to see if column T is populated. If not, update the file. Once you've done this, you can re-upload your file. To prevent this error happening in the future, you should check the employee's address in your payroll software and update so lines one and two are populated. Error message four. This email address is already linked to an employee. This message means you need to look out for two different issues. The first could be that an employee has an email which already exists. An email address cannot be shared by two employees. To check employee email addresses, go to menu, scheme setup, employees and then view employee list then sort the email addresses in alphabetical order to find which email address is linked to the employee record. You will need to update the email address to the correct record, then click update and re-upload your file. The second issue could be the employee already exists on your Smart Pension account with this email address, but under a different external ID. To fix this, check the employee's external ID and email address on Smart Pension match your file. Once you've done this, you can re-upload your file. Remember, if an employee has left employment and returned to work, you will need to remove their national insurance number and email address from their original record. Don't forget to add an exit date and reason to the original employee record. Error message five, pay period is not consecutive. If you get this error message, it means the pay period you're uploading is not the next expected pay period following your last contribution. The date displayed at the end of the error indicates the expected pay period. The pay period start date must be one day after the end of the previous pay period. To check a contribution for an employee, go to Menu, Contribution and Payroll, Contributions. The most recent submissions will be at the top of your list. To check an employee, you can use the filter option at the top right hand side. Once you've confirmed the last pay period on your account for this employee, you can then upload the next expected period. Error message six, assessment code for employees. The assessment and event codes are used to determine the scheme status of a member and the enrollment type. These error messages indicate that the assessment and or event codes on your file in columns A, C and A, D are incorrect. This usually happens when there is an invalid combination of assessment and event codes, or if you have contributions on your file for an employee who is not enrolled into the scheme. To fix these errors, ensure the assessment and event codes linked to the employee are up to date and correct in your payroll software and you are not submitting contributions for non-scheme members. Error message seven, postponement overlaps. If you get this error message, it means the pay period end date is before the postponement date that has been set for the employee. 
The date displayed at the end of the error indicates the postponement end date. The pay period end date must not be before this date. To check the postponement date for an employee, go to Menu, Scheme Setup, Postponements. To fix the error, either delete the postponement record if it has been added incorrectly, or remove the assessment code from the file if the contributions are 0.00, or update the event code on the file to 2 if the employee has opted in during their postponement. In each case, you will need to re-upload the file once you have made the corrections. If you have any questions or you still have problems with an error message, please call our support team 